That's no moon, that's a- Oh, gosh! Someone called a kid's parents, ugh. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about the Zetas and Omicrons in the Resistance faction and we're going to rank them. There's 25 Zetas in this faction. It is, the, the crunch is real folks and uh, I'll show you guys what we need to do to combat that. Now I did put out this faction ranking video that goes with this uh, a couple days before I put this one out. So uh, find the link to that in the video description if you want to watch that there's also an infographic that goes with both of these videos that you can find on my discord server more on that in a moment first I want to say a huge shout out to my patrons you guys are amazing thank you so much for all that you do all the support truly appreciate every single one of you and if you want to support this channel for free guys all you've got to do is hit the thumbs up button subscribe comment mount the algorithm it's a good time folks the water is lukewarm mm. Tasty. So here's the infographic, folks. If you go to my Discord server, it's found in the video description. You can get this for free. Go ha hand it out to your guilds, whatever. Uh, it's in the infographics section. I think there's an entire section devoted to faction uh, rankings at this point as well. So go check that out. And um, let's first let's go look at the infographic before we jump into the game. So here here's the. Here's the infographic a little bit more in detail. And uh, so we rank the characters, that's from the character ranking video already. And then uh, the the Zetas, are, we're gonna go through it in the game instead of just looking at the little icons here. But, uh, you know, the the ones on Ray, the Zetas on Ray, are really good. Uh, like, you really need at least, like, five of them. They're, they're all so essential. They really, really are. Uh, but th this is the best order, as far as I'm concerned. Th they're all... They're all so good, and yet it's gonna be tough to get them. I, I don't really think that there's any Zetas <clears throat> that you need to apply to the the rest of the faction before you add them to Ray. If you unlock Ray. Go apply them to Ray, at least the first five, and then maybe you can start handing them out. I mean, the, the one, there's a couple that are actually uh, pretty good, too. Like, if you want to run a Zori team, you're going to need a few Zetas there, etc. So, real quick, let's talk about Omicrons here, folks. There's not that many in the faction itself, though Ben Solo is kind of part of the faction because he's a ray lifter unit so let, let's uh let, let's zoom in on that and so first off just the three omicrons in the faction itself zori it, her her omicron really really strong it get it adds expose to everyone she really thrives around using expose uh, really strong it, it doesn't seem like that good when you read it but man uh, all that exposed stuff is is really strong uh, rose goes on that zori team and the omicron is very strong as well the turn meter train is real even without the rose tico omicron with the omicron it is incredibly strong and sometimes people just don't get Get turns they just get removed for forever uh, for forever sleep so uh, then then of course there's OG Finn this is a territory battle one and it is actually in the in the context of territory battle Omicrons it is incredibly strong I just tend to think you don't need Omicrons for territory battles uh, like you just you kind of just don't like yeah they're fun or whatever if you if you're into that cool like what I just I think there's better uses for Omicrons than using them on territory battle squads but if you do apply it that he becomes his squad becomes incredibly powerful you can strike them down because they're already more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Now, in terms of Ben Solos, uh, yes, I know he's not resistance, as you can see on the note. However, uh, the the order you want to put him in, uh, <laughs> and honestly, A and B can kind of be swapped a little bit. So A is his ability to, gosh, I forget the names of these things without looking at them, which is part of why we're going to go in the game for the rest of these, but it's the one, it's the second unique, and it's the one that keeps him reviving over and over again and keeping Ray alive for longer. I think it's, is it the, the duo in the force or something, dyad in the force? <laughs> he, he has a tough time dyading 
dying in, in the game, if, if you apply that one. His special is the one that applies healing immunity for four turns. Really strong. And then the unique one, it's still very worth applying, in my opinion, it, because he hits so dang hard. He, he ignores protection and what whoever hits he ignores protection and it's it's pretty nice you could even apply that one and use him in other squads like in star killer and still ignore protection though he doesn't hit as hard when he's not with ray all right so let's go to the game now and we'll talk about the actual zeta rankings and where which ones need to be applied let's let's move folks whoa we're we're in c3po's land okay so no Number 25 here, folks. There's 25 total. Uh, C-3PO and his unique. Now, uh, which one is it? Wait for me, I believe. Yeah, so at the start of the encounter, they each gain one stack of translation. C-3PO and R2-D2. You don't, you don't use C-3PO with resistance, though, really. And you, you never use him with R2-D2. That There are exceptions to that rule, but almost never in the context of resistance. Uh, it's, it's very skippable, guys. Just skip it. Just skip it, all right? All right, so these other Zetas, uh, 21 through 24, uh, we have... Hold on a sec. All right, we have Holdo's first, and hers is the one that adds Crit Avoid. So, uh, yeah, it, she she gets Crit Avoid, and she taunts when someone loses Foresight. I like the taunt when she removes Foresight. It's good. It, is it vital? Not really. Veteran Smuggler Han. It, he gains passive damage he gains so every time he gains a status effect so that that would be if he gets a buff if he gets a debuff and, and I don't, status effect is so vague i don't really like is it does he does he gain a status effect if he loses turn meter no one really knows i'm sure we could look it up in the mechanics one way or another yes he stacks damage he doesn't really it does, doesn't amount to much, though. If, if you're going to use him a lot, then I guess you could apply it. I mean, I obviously have it applied, but I have a lot of Zetas on this account, so uh, we're, I'm allowed. Now we have multicolored Chewbacca here, and he is... Uh, he he gets... He ramps his damage normally just for, you know, one... He, he stacks damage based on how many turns his opponents get. If you put a Zeta down, he gets a bonus turn for for how long it takes and I mean if you're going to be using him a lot this would be a really nice one because uh, it'll do a lot more damage but you, you just I haven't found much occasion to use him ever and so it, it's kind of just a superfluous mod it's not just fluous guys it's super fluous and then Ray Scav Ray, uh, like this again would be decent if you used her that much you just don't find much use for her even though she's an ufu even though she hits like uh uh, the force truck I referenced in my last video, but she, she, yeah, she applies days. But I mean that. It, so it's also if she has no debuffs, which is like, well, how, how can you really control that? She inflicts days. Uh, that's that's nice. It can't be resisted. That's cool. I mean, day, days is pretty strong. It's just not. It's not that strong, frankly. Um, and you, you just don't use Scav Ray that much. And it's all contingent on her being debuffed. It's even worse. R two D two. Let's see which one is this, folks. Hold on. Oh, it's his unique two. So it's number crunch. That's right. So uh, back in the day, everyone would really love this one. This one shares stats, and this is probably going to be pretty good with Galactic Legend Leia in the context of resistance. That like he hands out some buffs and everything. So at the start of battle, he hands out ten percent of his max buffs or of his max stats. Like. 10% of his health, he's handing everyone 6,000 health, 5,000 protect, like, the, the, those those are rookie numbers, you gotta, you gotta get those numbers up, and so, he's not that impressive, I'm sorry to say, you're just kind of a trash can at this point, buddy. Uh, Rose Tico, and she's got a like, weird one, because it's not a very good Zeta, folks, uh, what, so, she gets some turn meter. Whenever another resistance ally does a crit, she gains 10%. 10% isn't that much, especially because 
they're not doing, unless you're using Scav Ray for multi-hits and doing a ton of crits every time, like, it's just not, not doing that much. However, I, I think the only, the, the one saving grace is, and we've already said this, her Omicron is really strong, and so, it, if you're going to get the Omicron, you have to apply the Zeta. That, that's the reason you would apply the Zeta, in my opinion, uh, or unless, you know, if you had an excess of, of Zetas, like, like I do on my main account. Uh, also, if you want to boost her ship, the Zeta does give some stuff. I wouldn't recommend boosting her ship just, or put, applying a Zeta just to boost her ship, but that, that is a possibility, at the very least. Now, uh, the, the, people call them the purse bros, the hero bros, they, they have some interesting ones. You don't, absolutely need them i think we're, we're to the point of uh, instead of instead of them being just uh here let's let's look at this yeah okay so so we're, we're to the point now that that they're awesome instead of just luxury zetas they're actually decent starting now like they're they're good zetas you, you don't need them though they're not they're not vital you you can live without them so uh, what he does let's see this is the one hold on I hate forgetting this stuff guys yeah okay so it's is unique and uh, what when he's inspired when when an ally is prevented from using an ability during their turn so like when they're feared or maybe stunned they recover 40% health and protection and they gain turn meter so it kind of negates a little bit of uh, so he has to be inspired when that happens uh, so uh, he, and he doesn't get inspired without someone else helping him so hero hero po etc but i mean this is nice this is uh, this is the kind of thing that you just never notice is happening but if you stun the whole team and he's inspired they're all going to gain 40 percent turn meter and, and they're going to heal themselves <coughs> which is i mean it's a nice effect if you even notice it i guess uh, and i mean it's fairly specific it's like you have to be either stunned or feared at, for that to even happen or some other effect so um hero po he, he does he does some cool stuff let's see so that this one is another one that you just don't notice unless you're looking for it if if uh an enemy hits an, an inspired ally all of their buffs are dispelled from that enemy at the end of the turn that that's nice certainly it is nice on some levels, assuming you're he's being hit by someone who has a lot of buffs. But you, you just don't you don't notice it much, and it's it's just it's pretty pass. I like it's fine. I have it applied on two different accounts, but you, you don't you don't need it certainly. Uh, so yeah, let's just cycle through those two. We'll just do a video about that. All right, so the C-3PO special. This is his oh my goodness move. And it flicks Confuse twice on the target enemy. Confuse is great, folks. Uh, in, the tar in the context of resistance, again, you're not going to be using C-3PO that much with resistance anyways. This is a stronger Zeta than these other ones. C can you do without it? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I deal without it uh, on... On at least one of my accounts this is this is a decent one the confuse is nice because you're able to take like to confuse let let's peep like it impacts people it big in a bigger way than just one confuse so that that's nice at least right it's pretty neat um <laughs> yeah he's he doesn't need this that much it is nice to have though you call a mass assist and you put two confuses on they can't gain bonus i think it's bonus turn meter and they can't they can't gain buffs. Uh, it's a nice little thing to slap on onto someone. Uh, so, R2-D2's other Zeta here is his combat analysis. This is where when a light side character or ally scores a critical hit, they they cleanse themselves. They they stop having debuffs, which is it's nice. Again, like right now, R2-D2 is transitioning to hang out with. Galactic Legend Leia. She, he's not going to be on the resistance scene very much anyways, so uh, this is not as relevant as the other Zetas, but I mean, it is better than some of these other ones that we've seen, so it, it, it's nice. Jedi Training Ray, her unique two, the Virtuous Protector. So this is, the, this is, uh, uh, this one, okay, so uh, for a long time I thought that Jedi Training Ray's damage was based off of her ability to hit hard. The, the fact is she doesn't hit hard. She hits 
hard be she does a lot of damage because of how much turn meter she gets how well she can manipulate all of the turn meter and turns and stop people from being able to take turns and then doing a lot of exposed damage that's the strength of her team and so uh, an entire zeta that's based around her getting crit damage up and offense up and stuff like sure that that's kind of nice to be able to boost her own damage and stuff and i originally thought this was a lot stronger than it is it just yeah apply it if you're going to be using her a ton extra damage is great it's just not as like she gets she gets this cool stuff cool i, I mean it's fine i, I just it, the other two Zetas are, are a lot stronger. Number 13, we have BB-8's Unique 2. So this is his self-preservation protocol. This is the one where BB-8, uh, so whenever he evades, and he gets foresight a lot, if you read his kit, yeah, it, uh, yeah I mean, he takes damage, he has a 50% chance to gain foresight for two turns. And so every time he dodges, though, every time he evades, then all the droids on his team recover health and protection which is pretty nice especially if he's with a bunch of other droids like if he's on a sortie squad or if he's on a uh, on, a, on a grievous squad i mean he kind of dies quickly on a grievous squad because grievous kind of just grinds him into dust but uh, yeah this is this is a decent zeta uh, and uh, honestly i think it's worth applying if you're using him a lot with other droids if you're just hanging having him hang out with jedi training ray alone uh, maybe not. Maybe not so good. So, uh, because it's not healing other droids. Zori, her unique one. So both of her. Remember, guys. Uh, the first six uh, in this on this list are for Ray specifically. So uh, Zori, her first unique is. Uh, let's see. Gosh, this is such a such a list, isn't it, folks? Um. So. This is the one where she spreads all the tenacity up to people, and uh, let's see, allies, let's see, you have tenacity up whenever they deal damage to an enemy, they have a 35% chance to inflict this, but look, this is really strong, this is, this is really good, if you want to run a successful Zori squad, you're going to want this, for sure, but it's still not as good as some of the other ones ahead of it, uh, definitely worth getting though, let's see, what, at what point does this turn into yeah okay so this is the first one uh, that, that i consider to be vital on, on our list of on our list of uh you know infographic stuff that this is this is the first one that i consider to be vital for the squad so yeah really strong M maybe not quite as vital as the other ones but still still really good uh, bb8 this one is his roll with the punches this one uh when he, when he attacks out of turn, so he has counter when someone hits him, he has an 80% counter chance. When he hits someone out of turn, he calls a random resistance ally to assist. And remember, if he's with R2-D2, which again, the, the landscape is changing a little bit, and R2-D2 may not be with BB-8 that often, but if that happens, he can call R2-D2 to assist, and at, like in the context of Wampa, for instance, if he hits Wampa, and applies uh, on his basic, he applies tenacity down, and then he calls R2-D2 to assist. R2-D2 is most likely going to stun Wampa, even though Wampa has a million tenacity, he can still stun Wampa, and then you guys can just destroy the furred beast. Now, Jedi Training Ray Unique 1, this is... This is the one that a lot of people gave me a lot of, a lot of crap for applying this initially. And, and it, like now it it is it's just so strong. She doesn't get debuffed, guys. She every time you uh, she gets a debuff, it's a 40% chance to dispel all of the debuffs. So if you try to apply two debuffs, most likely all the debuffs are gone. Yes, sometimes she'll randomly get stunned or something, but that that almost never happens. That that is so crazy rare. Really strong, way stronger than people really understood initially. And I have to say, I'm a little bit proud of being ahead of the curve on that one. I've always defended that one, even when people threatened me with derision. <laughs> I don't know. So if you want to run the Zori squad, guys, you need resistance hero you don't need the omicron you need his zeta though because of how it interacts with turn meter and exposes well exposes and then and therefore turn meter if you want the zori squad 
to work, you need this Zeta. It, it is very important to have it, and without it, uh, it you just kind of stumble and fall and die, and I laugh, potentially, if I know about it. Jedi Training Race, so this one, her leadership is incredibly strong. It's wonderful. It's so cool. It, it does, so exposed enemies lose 5% turn meter, which can't be evaded or resisted, uh, etc. All this stuff, and, uh, you know, reduces cooldowns by one. Man, it, it's iconic. Like, this is, this is her... Man, this is what made her awesome back in the day. This is the number one you apply on her if you if you get her, at least back in the day. Now she just kind of babysits Ray in my in like usually that's what happens. Or she just hangs out with Zori. She doesn't have her own squad. And so even though the leadership Zeta is amazing, I would say like don't just blink, don't just immediately apply it. If you're going if you have a legitimate use for her. Uh, and that Zeta, then sure, absolutely, uh, throw throw it on her if she's going to be the lead, do it. But uh, because it's it's a powerful Zeta, but otherwise you, you can go without it if she's just going to be on babysitting duty and is not the leader. That's all. All right, Zori's unique one. Is this the is this the top one, guys? I I can't. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. So besides Jedi, besides Rey and all of her Zetas, this is the number one. So uh, let's see. Yeah. So if the ally, oh, this is this is the. Gosh, I'm just so bad at this, guys. All right. So whenever, hold on, hold on a sec. What have I done? Did I mix the two up? Is this supposed to be the unique two instead? Yeah, so... Oh, this is the one that... Uh, when people... Yeah, when, when people get hurt on her team, then they, uh, you know, have good things happen to them. It just makes the team crazy resilient. Really strong. Really tough to beat. And, uh... Apparently, I called this unique... Too, I, I might have to change that on, on my infographic. It might be too late to do that. In fact, so don't hate me too much if that's wrong. But yeah, she she does she does heal uh, people. She she gives them the tanks damage immediately. Like it, it makes the team really really challenging to kill, and is part of the reason of a huge part of the reason why her team is just so crazy challenging to beat on defense. It's just really strong. Eventually, we'll, we'll have something that deletes them. But for now, we're stuck with having to overkill a lot of times. And then we have one through six on Ray herself. So her leadership, her leadership is the one that she hands out damage immunity. Really, really important stuff. Uh, really strong. That's the number one. That so so we're going going from number one to the worst. So the worst is going to be the basic. But um okay. So special two is the next one I would apply, which is whirlwind because this one whirlwind doesn't exist unless you apply this one. That whirlwind is half of the damage that she deals and it, it makes it so that people can't be revived i mean yes you have it technically uh, just at a level two at, on the level two ability but in reality you you're not going to kill things especially things in this day and age of relic five and above without the 2x massive damage so without that it just deals one massive damage without any kind of ramping based off of relic amplifier level this is really important guys that's a, it's a very important one next we have special one which is lifeblood and that one is target other ally gains lifeblood until they're defeated or until lifeblood is granted to a different ally which can be so this is the one where she gives the buff out to people and this this buff is really nice the damage there that they receive is decreased by 30 percent and the damage dealt is increased by 30 which means you put it on ben solo and he starts destroying people it's it's pretty nice uh, he does more damage and he takes less damage yes please thank you Let's see, the, the next one is her unique two. And so that is the Galactic Legend one. This is the one that her health and protection ramp based off of her Relic Amplifier level, which is really strong. The next one, the, this one, I mean, the, all the way up to this one, your unique one, it, it so if they have Inspired or Damage Immunity, they can't have their turn meter reduced, 
I mean, th this would be kind of funny not to apply because in like in some circumstances you you might just time people out but it, which is why I, I would put them but I would put this one on second to last but really having your turn meter reduced while you have the damage immunity or inspired would be a really challenging thing to overcome and I wouldn't recommend trying to do it and then finally her basic is still pretty decent uh, but it, it's just she deals extra damage on her basic and you can kind of like you don't rely on her basic for anything like it's fine to have it it's good that you she that it exists but she exists for using her other abilities not her basic so anyways folks that that's my list and i'm sticking to it unless you convince me otherwise in the comments let me know what your zeta priority is go check out that infographic in my discord server thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things zeta prevails